What do you get when you smash a bunch of LEDs and a motor together? Well, in most cases, they get messed up. But what if it turns into this funky looking disco ball, um, a cube, or let's call it a NeoPixel bullet? Let's explore something. The project started off with a desire to use the NeoPixel matrix panels and motors lying around in my stash. I started searching for ideas and came across a cool project on Thingiverse using NeoPixels. You can find a link to the original project along with the detailed information about this project, including the parts to be 3D printed, the electronics, the circuit diagram, and the software in the video description below. The body was designed in Fusion 360 and includes a display with three NeoPixel panels mounted on a turntable-like platform. The display cycles through some animation sequences that can be changed over Wi-Fi using a phone or any PC. Let's take a quick look at the 3D printed parts and the electronics used in the project. All parts are printed in PLA with 0.2 mm layer height and a 4 mm nozzle on an Ender 3. First up is the canopy, which has three square faces to install the NeoPixel panels at right angles to each other. Next is the base, which is a cylindrical housing to situate the electronics, including the microcontroller, the DC motor, the slip ring, and the buck converter. The power input and the switch is also located here. The next is a slew bearing with 90 tooth and it's printed in place. The space between the inner and outer ring is 0.5 millimeter and could be a tight fit. So make sure that your printer is tuned accordingly. A mounting bracket which keeps the DC motor and the slip ring in place. The rest of the electronics can be mounted on or around the bracket. A 15 tooth spur gear which is mounted on the motor shaft and mates with the slew bearing with a gear ratio of 6 is to 1 to reduce the speed and increase the torque. The LED panels and the corresponding lids. The lid serves to unify the final look and diffuses the light from the otherwise very bright LEDs. For the microcontroller, I decided to stick with ESP8266. It has built-in Wi-Fi, which can be used to remotely change the display patterns or update the firmware over the air. It is inexpensive and generally packs in a lot of punch in a very small package. A slip ring to join the upper and lower sections. More about this further in the video a switch and a barrel jack for the power input from a DC adapter. Let's go through the build process. We will assemble the base followed by the canopy and then connect the two together in the end. First, secure the motor and slip ring to the mounting bracket using some 3mm screws and nuts. Then insert the barrel jack and the power switch to the appropriate openings in the base. Now before wiring up the motor and slip ring with the supply, make sure that the slip ring is installed with its collar resting on the mounting bracket. Attach the mounting bracket to the standoffs in the base. Situate the ESP8266 and wire it up as per the connection diagram in the instructions. Install the slew bearing after lining up with the tab on the side of the base. The bearing will rest on a small ledge located on the inside perimeter of the base. Test and make sure that the motor can drive the slew bearing without binding. Next, we will start with the assembly of the upper section or the canopy. The NeoPixel panels go on the three faces 
and have to be installed in a specific pattern and orientation for the display to work as per the default software configuration. The illumination patterns are achieved using a pixel map derived from the coordinates of each pixel in the 3D space. You can think of the three panels as three orthogonal faces in the Cartesian space joined together at the origin. As such, the faces can be treated as XY, YZ, and ZX. Refer to the picture in the project instructions for more information. Each panel has an input port and an output port with voltage, ground, and control signal line. The panels have to be connected in series with the output of the first going into the input of the second and the output of the second going into the input of the third. The panels have LEDs in a non-serpentine pattern. It is easily configurable in the software if the pattern is opposite. Note that a panel can be installed in four different orientations on a given face. Again, refer to the instructions to ensure the correct orientation. I'll admit that it was a bit tricky to orient them the first time. And of course, it's not the end of the world if you get them mixed up. As long as you know what you have and how you have installed it, you can change the pixel map in the software and get it to work. One unique challenge I faced in the beginning of the project was to transfer the power and signal from the base to the moving canopy. So I searched up and found a few solutions, including the use of hollow core motors or simply use an independent power source. The former was a bit expensive for my taste and the latter was a little inconvenient. So I decided to go with an easy and relatively inexpensive option that is a slip ring. A slip ring is an electromechanical device that allows the transmission of power and electrical signals from a stationary to a rotating structure. However, after digging a bit deeper, I noted that there was some concern around the electrical noise that is introduced with the use of a slip ring. It was a bit of a leap of faith since the control signal for the NeoPixels has a rather strict timing requirement, but it turned out to be okay at the end. Maybe the quality of slip rings has improved and the noise effects may not be pronounced for small voltages and current. A bit about the power requirements. The LEDs microcontroller and the DC motor supply are all in parallel. The main supply comes from a 5 volt DC adapter capable of sourcing at least 3 amps of current. A single NeoPixel draws around 60 milliamps of current to display white with full brightness. So in theory, a 192 pixels alone will take about 11 amps current. In practice, however, not all the pixels are illuminated at the same time and they will not be all white either. The DC motor will not be needing too much torque to drive the canopy and as such won't be drawing excessive current. So I figured a 3 amps adapter should be enough. A buck converter is used to step down the input voltage to the DC motor to the desired value based on the required speed using an onboard potentiometer. If the slew bearing is having a tough time turning, then apply a little lubrication. It should help reduce any friction. Let it run for some time for it to get dialed in. Clip the wires long enough so that they can be brought outside from the small opening in the bottom face of the canopy. Color coding can make the life a lot simpler I chose to go with red for voltage, black for ground, and identical color for a given pair of input and output signals that have to be connected together. I then twisted the three wires from each port and brought them out. Next, connect the input and output stages. At the end, it will leave one set which has to be connected to the turning portion of the slip ring. The fixed portion of the slip ring is connected to the output from the base. That's it for the connections. Now snap the two halves together, turn it on and enjoy.